nice footage and it fits in well with today's video. In part four in the series, covering letters and diary entries from this wonderful book, we'll follow the experiences of a major who served with the 20th Panzer Division in the 3rd Panzer Group in Army Group Center. Using rare film footage, we'll bring his story to life. And with an OKW situational map, we'll add context. You can find the entries from today's episode on page 91 in the book. If you haven't got it yet, the pinned link in the comments section will get you to it. At the end of the video, we'll take a look at this 1943 training film, which shows the characteristics of the massive Soviet KV-2. So stick around, it's worth it. This is the original war atlas for the German High Command for Operation Barbarossa. We are looking at the situational map for July 25th, 1941. We can see that the Smolensk pocket has almost been formed and the 20th Panzer Division is situated here to the north. Their primary responsibility was to stop Soviet incursions that were pushing from the east, trying to relieve those that were being trapped in the pocket. The pressure from the east was significant. This map from July 27th, two days later, when the pocket was sealed, provides a more detailed view. Der 25. Siebte, 41. Allmählich macht sich bei uns gradually. A reaction of nervous tension made itself felt among us. Somewhat exhausted, we went a little way back along the road, up to a street attendant's cottage, where we sat down on a bench to rest. From there we had a good overview of the battlefield in the sunken ground. We saw both our own and enemy tanks that had been put out of action but none combat ready from either party. About a hundred meters away from us stood a burning T-34 that, as was later ascertained, had been shot into flames by the commander of the 6th Company. Half an hour later, it blew sky high with a dull crack flinging the turret 30 meters. Further back at the forest edge, we saw a T-34 that had rammed one of our Panzer IIs. It had even climbed up it and then not been able to free itself. From a distance, it looked like the mating of two dinosaurs. This scene was later referred to in the regiment as the Panzer Wedding. Of course, some of the men had suffered a shock as they were taken completely by surprise and attacked right up close by enemy tanks. Clearly superior in terms of weapons and armor plating. And even more so when they discovered that they had hardly any impact with their own little tank guns. Who could hold that against them? One non-commissioned officer drove back into the area of combat Echelon B with his tank, which had been severely damaged in the fight. There, sinking down exhausted next to Lieutenant K, he told the following about his experience. Hey Lieutenant, it was terrible. One of the Russian tanks just advances up to me. I'm firing and firing armor-piercing shells, high-explosive shells, with the machine gun. Hit after hit, but he doesn't notice any of it. And he's coming ever closer with his shots missing us by hair's breadth. 
shoots again. The shot tears the track shield from my tank. I can calculate when he will have the next huge shell in his barrel, and then he will hit home. I'm only 30 meters away from him, and then another tank comes at me from the side, its barrel pointed at me. That's when my driver puts his foot down and we drive off between the two of them with gusto. They are better armored, better armed, and faster, and what else could we have done? Look how I'm shaking. Now, let's take a look at that KV-2 training footage. Der schwerste Panzer ist der 52 Tonnen schwere KW-2. Fälschlicherweise als 58 Tonner oder 64 Tonner bezeichnet. Der steile, würfelförmige Turmkasten, der eine große Gesamthöhe abgibt, lässt ihn schon von Weitem als solchen erkennen. Das Fahrgestell ist das gleiche wie beim KW-1. Seine Bestückung ist eine 15 cm kampfwagen -Horbitze und zwei MGs, deren Einbau noch gezeigt wird. Schusslöcher befinden sich an den Seiten des Turmes und in der Rückwand. Wie beim KW1 befindet sich in der Mitte der Fahrerfront die Fahrerseeklappe mit Seeschlitz und Winkelspiegel. Daneben ein MG in Kugelblende mit beschränktem Schutzbereich. Auf dem Turm sitzen zwei Rundblickfernrohre. Dies ist ein Seeloch. Hier liegt das Turmzielfernrohr. An den Seiten Seeschlitze, auf dem Turm Winkelspiegel zur Beobachtung des Gefechtsfeldes. Auf der Rückseite des Turms ein MG in Kugelblende. Eine verwundbare Stelle bei diesem Panzer und daher auch beim KW1 ist die Luftzuführung am Heck. If you'd like to see the other parts to this series, which are really good, click on this link. Patreon members get regular access to exclusive film footage. If you like this kind of material, please subscribe to the channel and like the video. Thanks for watching.